Now here. that you have a good idea of what the atoms look like in an equation and kind of what the coefficients mean, having two separate units and the subscripts meaning they're connected, now we actually want to look at the equations and start learning how to balance them and figure out how many there are on each side. So it would kind of be ridiculous to draw pictures out every time you need to balance the equation. Absolutely. And it's not really common to see a chemist sitting there drawing Absolutely. pictures to balance an equation. So here we're going to learn how to do it without the pictures. You're just, what we're going to do is you're going to look at all the atoms in the equation and you're just going to count how many of each type of atom are on each side without the pictures. And when needed, add coefficients to balance them. That's really important that we say that, and it's highlighted on here very clearly, coefficients only are just the only thing we're going to put on there. You cannot change the molecules. Leave the molecule alone. You can add more of them, coefficients, but you cannot change the subscripts in the molecule itself. Uh, pick one atom at a time, balance it using the coefficients, repeat for every other element, and you just go back and forth in a trial and error type situation um, until everything is balanced and both sides have the same number of atoms. So three tips there, one atom at a time, keep repeating until you've got all the elements done, and then go back and check and make sure both sides have the same number. It's magical when that happens. Uh, so here's, a, here's an example. We have... So we have three different elements. Silver, hydrogen, hydrogen and sulfur. sulfide. And then, um, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of put a little dashed line here down my paper. Wow, that's a bad line. Um, because the number of atoms I have on the reactant side, I also need to have on the product side. Hence balanced. Balanced equations. And that way we're obeying the law. The law of conservation of matter. Right? And I'm just going to make an inventory of all my atoms. If you're struggling with balancing equations, this is a very good tool to help you sort out how many you have on each side. Eventually, you should be able to do it without this, but it's a good tool. Yeah, it, you should definitely do this for the first, I don't know, Couple, 100 yeah. to, to 200 <laughs> equations you balance. Uh, maybe not that many, but... Perhaps no. Maybe, maybe a handful. Yeah. Unless you're struggling with it, then keep going. How many do I have of the silver on the reactant side? I see one. Yeah, it looks like just one right now. Hydrogen. There's, there's a little two. subscript there. So that subscript is two for the hydrogen. Two H's. Not two for the sulfur. No, there's only one sulfur. Right. All right. Products. Silver, now I have two. That's different than the reactant side. Hydrogen, two I is have different two. Than one. Two is different than one. And sulfur, I have one. So the hydrogen and the sulfur are the same, but the silver are different. Awesome. So this is where you figure out where to start. You want these numbers to match up on the right and the left. You want the same number on both sides. And it looks like we need to add silver to the reactant side. We need another silver. We only need one more. So we put a one in front of the silver, right? Well, no. Well, there's already one there. This is an right, implied right. one. Okay. There's already a one there. There has to be something. If it were zero, it wouldn't be there. Um, so we don't want a one, we have a one. We want a two. And that changes my inventory. Now I have two silvers, two hydrogens and a sulfur. And on the product side, two silvers, two hydrogens and a sulfur. Success. So my coefficients total, I've got a two in the silver, one H2S, one AG2S, and one H2. Should I write those all the time? No. In chemistry, we generally do not write ones. No, we don't write ones. Just like we don't write the subscript one. Just like in math, if there's an X, you don't have to write one X. It's an X. There's one of them. Well, it technically is equal to one X, but... It, it is, but you don't write one. <laughs> All right, let's get rid of that. Bad example. Here we have another example. All right, so we're going to make that atom inventory again and just take into account all the atoms that we have on the reactant and product side. So we've got zinc, hydrogen, and chlorine on the reactant side. And luckily we also have zinc, hydrogen, and chlorine on the product side. If you ever count up atoms and on each side and you have two different atoms, then you've got a real problem with yep. your equation. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, you're beyond balancing. Reactants. There are one of each atom. All right. Products. That's a P. There's one zinc two hydrogens, and two chlorines. Two hydrogens, two chlorines. Okay, so now we've got two things that are unbalanced in here. You can see there's one hydrogen on the reactant side, but two on the products, and one chlorine on the reactant side, but 
two, two on, on the, the products. products. So I've got, I could start out, the zinc looks pretty good. We'll come back to that if we need to. But the hydrogen and the chlorine are not balanced. Which one should I start with? Let's start with the chlorine. All right, chlorine it is. I've got two chlorines on the right. Let's go to the left. How do I get two chlorines here? Can I just add a two? Like, no, no, no. No, you cannot just add two chlorines. That's Only not... coefficients. Right, if, when you put that subscript, there, that makes a whole new molecule, which I don't think I even actually exists. Leave them alone. Just make uh, coefficients and you're good. So I need to put a two here. Now, that affects the hydrogen too, but it's okay. This is trial and error. Let's just see what happens. That, that, that balances my chlorines but it also changes my hydrogen. So I need to change that in my inventory as well. Now I have oh. two hydrogens, okay? Hey, hey. That, that actually works out in our favor this time. It does, because cool. the chlorines are now balanced. And as a result of that, the hydrogens are balanced too. That happens a lot. Uh, you may not see where you're going. You just pick one and start and balance it and you're good. And it'll just kind of magically work out at the end if you're doing it right. So the coefficients, one, two, one, and one. Again, you don't have to write the ones, but they exist. Those were very, very simple equations. Now we've got some more difficult ones that fall into three different categories. You're going to get some tricks for them. Okay, so trick number one says My bag of polyatomic tricks. ions. <laughs> um, polyatomic ions most of the time can be treated as a single unit because you'll see they exist on the reactant side, and then that same polyatomic ion exists together as an ion on the product side as well. Yeah, so if I have nitrate on one side and nitrate on the other side, there's no need to break it apart into nitrogen and oxygen. Just say I've got one, one of that unit and one of that unit. Keep the whole polyatomic ion together. When oxygen is a reactant, balance it last. We will show you a trick to figure out how many oxygens. Sometimes you need to multiply the whole equation by two to get the right number of oxygens. But yeah. if you balance it last, some of those are kind of difficult, and you will figure out that generally if, if something's by itself, it's really easy to balance last. Oxygen's no exception. The third trick is the water trick. So one of our polyatomic ions that we'll deal with, I guess relatively frequently, is the hydroxide ion. All right. Water actually is a combination of hydrogen and the hydroxide ion, so we can rewrite water instead of H2O as HOH. There's two hydrogens and an oxygen, HOH. I like yeah. it. And there's a polyatomic ion there. So it's kind of like breaking water apart into a polyatomic ion, just like trick one. Um, you don't have to do it all the time, but there are certain cases where it works, which we'll talk about here in a moment. Off to trick number one. Here we have some polyatomic ions. Now I'm going to make my inventory again, but now I'm going to consider my polyatomic ions. What are my polyatomic ions? Get out well, your list. It looks like the NO3 there, that's in parentheses, so that's pretty easy to see. Nitrate awesome. and nitrate, it's the same on both sides. So I'm going to write that as a whole unit in my inventory. Okay, so we got How many nitrates do I side. have over here? Well, there's two so do we polyatomic have six? ions. No, there's just oh. there are two of that whole thing. All right. Two nitrates. That makes sense. And on this side, no parentheses on this and there's nothing outside of three. There's still a nitrate. There's just one of them. All right. I've got a barium. Um I've got How many bariums? I, oh, I've got I've got one. That okay. two doesn't go to the barium, nice. just the nitrate parentheses. Right. Uh, over here, I've got one barium. Wow. Hi, guys. Just a one. Just a one, not a B, not a number. And then there's one more polyatomic ion here you're maybe less familiar with, but if you see three atoms, we haven't bonded any molecules with three atoms unless there's a polyatomic ion, so that's a mm -hmm. giveaway. And you can see it on both sides of the equation, so you see the CrO4 on both sides, and that's a good way to tell this is a polyatomic ion. So that is the polyatomic ion that's known as chromate. Chromate. And on this side, I also have sodium. There are two there, and there is one there. Now this looks very similar to what the last, uh, the first few equations were. You have four things uh, back and forth. You're balancing them a lot easier than trying to break apart 
the nitrogen, the oxygen, the chromium, and the oxygen. A lot easier to look at these as polyatomic. So which one do you want to start with? I noticed the barium and the chromate are pretty good. They're balanced. I was going to suggest starting with those because they looked like they'd be easy to do since they're already balanced. Well, they're done, oh. so I'm just going to check them <laughs> so off. They match. Done. Matching cool. They match. Let's start with the nitrate then. Nitrate it is. I've got right. two on the left. I need two on the right. I've only got one. So just put a little subscript two outside of that nitrate, right? You would, Mr. Giacomo. We're oh, going to put man. a coefficient because coefficients change how many there are. you got to right. change the whole molecule. Uh, but I noticed I did not just change the nitrate. That two goes to the nitrate. It also goes to the sodium. So now I have, so we have another sodium. That in our inventory here. All right, my nitrate's good. We balanced that. Let's take a look at what that did to the sodium. Oh, it balanced the sodium. Magic. Magical. Balancing equations really is a magical thing. Um, and they match. So that one coefficient took care of both atoms. <clears throat> now we've got the oxygen trick. So what's going to happen here? I don't have any polyatomics on both sides. I've got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen on both sides. Let's see what we have. Uh, so we, we look at it, start off with the carbons. There's two carbons on the reactant side, six hydrogens, and two oxygens on the product side. One carbon, two hydrogen, and Three oxygens. Oh, good catch. There's two yeah. there, and there's one there. Got to be careful. Sometimes oh, there's the same atom in, in different places. Yeah, that's tricky. It came up in two different spots. Now, let's do oxygen last. So would you rather do the hydrogen or the carbon first? Because none of them match. Mm. Mm. I don't know. Let's do carbon first. It's just on the All list right. first. So let's... Two carbons. I need, I've got one, so let's change that. I need two carbons. Okay. So I've got two there. I added a coefficient. But now I have four oxygens plus the one we had over here, five, I think. Now Generally. I have five because that changed the oxygens too. Right. But my carbons are good, and that's okay. Pick one atom. It throws the others out, but uh, just keep going. Wait, can we do hydrogen next then? Yeah, because oxygen is okay, cool. last, so that would necessitate yes. that hydrogen is next. Six hydrogens on the left, two on the right. So I need four more, so put a four there, right? Um, four times two is going to be eight, though. Oh, because it's multiplied through. You can't just put four. We want a three. Three separate H2s gives me six total hydrogens. Nice. Now, the hydrogens are balanced. Wait, that changed the oxygen, Oh, I think, it did. Too. You're right. I have to update my inventory. I have four oxygens here plus three here. Now, that gives me... Four plus three, seven. Seven. Nice. All right. Two times... All right, so here we go. We've got seven oxygens. On the left, we've got two. We need five more. So half of it. It comes in packs of two. I can't get seven out of that. Yeah. So I guess that doesn't work. So what do we do? Well, this number here is odd. This number here is even. How do you suppose you get an odd number to go into an even number? Well, if you make the, e the odd number even by doubling the reaction, you just double all these coefficients. So why did we multiply the whole reaction by two? Well, everything else is already balanced, right? Yep. So if I double everything, it still keeps these balanced because I doubled that two and that two and I have four and four. I doubled my hydrogens, now I've got 12 and I had six over there, so I have 12. So it keeps those balanced, but then it also makes this 14. And we can definitely multiply something by two to get 14. Now we can, so we just kind of ignored this space right here. We didn't know what it was, so we just ignored it for a moment until we got everything doubled and evened out, if you will. Yeah, evened out. Evened out. Nice. Uh, and now we can figure out if we have a coefficient of seven up here, seven O2s, that will give me 14 oxygens, which matches the other side. Sometimes you will need to double your coefficients uh, to balance the oxygens. Trick number three, HOH. -H. Now, when do I use this trick? Well, we said if there is a water 
and then the hydroxide ion, the OH ion. Oh, okay, on the other side. And so this my, particular equation this one, has that. It does have that. Cool. The last one, there's water. Why didn't we break that up into HOH? There's no hydroxide on the left, guys. You can't do it then. But if you have the H or the hydroxide, then you can break it up. So I'm just going to cross this out, and I'm going to write HOH. Okay, so then we're going to keep those OHs together, right? Because they're polyatomic ions we are. on both sides. I've got a barium, I have a hydrogen, and a hydroxide. I okay. made that a polyatomic ion. Barium, hydrogen, hydroxide. One barium, one hydrogen, one hydroxide. One barium, two hydrogens two hydroxides. That two hydrogens comes from up there, okay. not the hydroxide hydrogens. They're different. That makes All sense. Right. Would you rather balance the hydrogen or the hydroxide? It looks like the barium's good. Yeah, let's do the hydrogens next Hydrogen. on the list. All right. It's cool. No, I don't. I'm going to go down to the bottom. Oh, okay. It's like Jeopardy starting with the $5,000 question. Yeah, who does that, though? Yeah, I would. Everybody. <laughs> two to one. Let's go to the hydroxides. I need one more on the left. Let's do that. That gave me two hydroxides and checks that off. But it also gave me two hydrogens, which checks that off. It's one of those magical examples where one number just kind of affects a couple different things, makes the world a happier place. <laughs>